Thanks to progress made since 2021, SpaceX already has significant experience testing an earlier Orbital-class Starship prototype on the ground, but the process of testing boosters is still fresh and unfamiliar for a number of reasons. On top of major design changes made to Starship and Super Heavy over the last year as SpaceX continues to refine the rocket, the company also developed a substantially different version of its Raptor engine. Compared to Raptor version 1, Raptor 2 almost looks like a new engine and can produce around 25% more thrust with 230 tons versus 185 tons from its predecessor. SpaceX has also tweaked how the engine operates, particularly around startup and shutdown, further weakening the value of past experience testing Raptor 1 and 1.5 engines on Ship 20 and Boosters 3 and 4. In other words, with Ship 24 and Booster 7 engine testing, it's possible that SpaceX is effectively starting from scratch. Many aspects of testing, which involve propellant conditioning, thermal characteristics, tanking, detanking, certain test stands, are likely mostly unchanged, but almost every aspect of a rocket is affected by its engines. As a result, despite some of the simplifications in Raptor 2's design, operating the engine on Super Heavy is much harder to get right. B-7 kicked off the most important stage of its flight qualification process on August 9th and the 11th with two back-to-back -back static fires, each igniting just one of 20 installed Raptor engines. Both appeared to be successful, and SpaceX returned B-7 to its Boca Chica, Texas factory, reinstalled a full set of 33 engines, and sent the Super Heavy back to the launch pad two weeks later. On August 31st, SpaceX attempted to ignite three of Booster 7's 33 Raptors. One engine failed to ignite, but the others did not, resulting in a mostly successful two-engine test. Over the next two weeks, SpaceX performed several ignition-free spin prime tests, two of which appeared to spin up all 33 engines without causing an explosion. Finally, SpaceX telegraphed its next major goal with a seven-engine spin prime test on September 16th, and another, albeit with a slightly different set of engines, on September 19th. Shortly after the second seven-engine spin prime, SpaceX refilled Booster 7 with propellant, went back through the same procedures, and ignited the same seven engines for about five seconds. No obvious issues arose, and Musk later implied that the test went well. It set a new record for the largest number of Raptors simultaneously ignited on a single prototype, and likely also broke the record for most thrust produced by a vehicle tested at Starbase. That is to say that significant progress has been made in the last few months, but SpaceX has a huge amount of work left, almost all of which lies in uncharted terrain. That goal, same as it has been for half a year, is to qualify the first Super Heavy booster for flight. To do so, SpaceX must, at long last, static fire a Super Heavy with all necessary Raptor engines installed. For Booster 7, its near-term successors, that means 33 new Raptor 2 engines, capable of generating a total of around 7,600 metric tons, or about 16.7 million pound force of thrust. That's exactly what SpaceX workers have been focused on doing since Super Heavy B-7 was rolled back to the factory for additional work after a successful 7 Raptor static fire. On September 19th, the CEO revealed that SpaceX would roll the Starship booster currently assigned to the debut back to the factory, which is B-7, for mysterious robustness upgrades, an unexpected move right after a record-breaking static fire test. Two days later, Musk indicated that those upgrades might involve fortifying Super Heavy Booster 7's thrust section to ensure it can survive Raptor engine failures. With 33 Raptor V2 engines powering it and plenty of evidence that those Raptors are far from being perfectly reliable, the concern is understandable, even if the response is a bit different than SpaceX's norm. But although Musk didn't exactly reveal what he's going to upgrade on B7, based on some indications, there are a few points that SpaceX may be able to make. First, Booster 7's pipes will need checking after the biggest fireball ever. Remember the damaged transfer tube in the leaked photo of B-7 a few months ago? The photo shows a short portion of B-7's liquid methane transfer tube that runs through the booster's new liquid oxygen header tank, which itself sits inside Super Heavy's main liquid oxygen tank at the aft end of the rocket. In other words, a tube inside a small tank inside a large tank. 
Super Heavy's liquid methane transfer tube generally does what it says, allowing methane to safely fly down through the main liquid oxygen tank and fuel up to 33 Raptor engines. At full thrust, that tube would need to supply around 20 tons, or around 45,000 pounds, of methane per second. If the replaced transfer tube passes this test, it'll be a great assurance for Booster 7. But on top of merely transferring methane through the oxygen tank, B7 introduced a design change that allows some or all of that tube to change functions and become a header tank mid-flight. That would require a system of valves that could seal off the main liquid methane tank once it was emptied, turning the transfer tube into a sort of giant steel straw filled with enough liquid methane to fuel Super Heavy's boost back and landing burns. And according to much speculation, the upgrades will probably include the Raptor Blast shielding. Additionally, some suggested that SpaceX may install auto struts on B7. If you built a long, tall rocket, launched it, and then turned up the time warp only to see the whole thing collapse on itself like an accordion, bend in half, and or tie itself in knots mid-flight, auto struts can fix that. Auto struts are like regular struts. They add rigid reinforcements between parts to hold everything steady. But unlike normal struts, an auto strut is free weighs nothing, and can be connected to three parts. It's also the heaviest part on the rocket which can change in flight, especially when docking. Once these upgrades are completed, B7 will be rolled back to the launch pad. The sequencing isn't clear, but SpaceX will need to complete the first full Super Heavy wet dress rehearsal, and then move on to the first full 33 Raptor static fire. It's also unclear where Shift 24 fits into that picture. SpaceX will eventually need to, or at least should, conduct a full wet dress rehearsal of the fully stacked Starship and may even want to attempt a 33 engine static fire with that fully fueled two stage vehicle to truly test the rocket in the same conditions it will launch under. Will SpaceX fully stack B7 and S24 as soon as the booster returns to the pad, risking a potentially flight worthy Starship during the riskiest super heavy tests yet? Either way, it will be a major challenge for SpaceX to have a fully stacked Starship ready to launch by the end of November. And that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoy what my team and I are doing, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Otherwise, as always, this is Kevin with Great SpaceX, and my team and I will see you next time.